we're working on the Literacy Play Shop project. And in this project, um, we work with teachers to help them understand and to use um, media production in their classrooms in order to engage the sometimes problematic text in popular media. Um, so one of the things that we do is to uh, help them uh, help children produce with digital technologies like iPads and common tools with the toys that they love and the stories that they know best to create films. So we started with uh, early childhood classrooms and early childhood teachers in preschools and kindergartens, but this work is now extended into elementary grades and into teacher education classes at the university so that we get sort of a, a larger range. So in this project we use mediated discourse analysis to understand and look at children's film production, their activity in the classroom, and um, with the toys themselves that they're, they're using. So one of the uh, first approaches that we do is to begin with ethnographic methods. And we want to go into a, to a classroom, into these teaching situations, and see what's really going on. So we come in and um, do some observations and some video to capture some video data. Then we also at the same time are working with teachers. So part of this is similar to to participatory action research. We want to help teachers make a difference within their classrooms in ways that make sense um, for their own setting, their own context, and for the children they work with. Um, once we've worked with teachers and studied with them, they then um, move on to creating their own curriculum that fits into their literacy curriculum that incorporates current digital technologies as well as popular media. And after that part, we uh, look back through the data, we document in uh, the lesson plans that are going on in the classroom, and we look through the data to look closely at children's actions with the toys. At the same time, we're looking in a global way, kind of at a macro level, so micro and macro together. Um, when we're looking at a micro level, level, we're looking at the ways in which the various modes in the environment, the nonverbal ways that children inter interact, are shaping what happens with the films they make, with the play that they undertake. Um, so at the macro level, we're able to connect these micro actions that are happening with a toy or with a camera and connect those to global histories of how an action is used or what a toy means in a media franchise and how children are taking that up by responding to those stories that they know or to the materials of the object. In mediated discourse analysis, we want to make sure that we are situating these activities and these toys and the media within a peer culture. And in order to do that, we need to have an ethnographic method collection in order to understand what this means to the people on the site. Um, we use the multimodal analysis part of mediated discourse analysis to understand what are those unspoken ways of doing and being within the classroom that help people belong and show that they belong. And so because they're unspoken, we need to look really closely. And multimodal analysis helps us do that. And then finally, we use the macro lens of media discourse analysis to look out to see how these actions are situated in global discourses about what boys should do, what girls should do, and other things that affect young children on a daily basis. These methods allow you to look at the unspoken ways that culture shapes everyday activities. Um, they allow you to ask or to think with participants to find out what really matters to them in this space and move toward those goals. What they don't allow you to do is to find a quick, easy, simple answer about what works best here. Instead, it you're going to find out that something 
um, is more complex and complicated than maybe it appears on the surface. It allows you to see more deeply and explain what's happening um, within a classroom, but in a way that's unfinalizable. So it is an answer that is always going to have something more that you could ask. And so it is a way, it, there's always something left that you could track back or find out more about. If people are interested in learning more about this approach, um, there hasn't been a lot written about it, but um, I do have a book coming out in the series on expanding literacies um, with Rutledge that is edited by um, Jennifer Rousel and Cynthia Lewis, and so people could be looking for that sometime next year.